framework for flu both fluid and smoke simulations. Uh, which one of you has used the fluid simulation in Blender at least once? Okay, and who did use the smoke simulation at least once? Who thinks it would be cool if fluid and smoke simulation were one and the same in Blender unified? Oh, okay, I see. Uh, who did use Maya at least once? The simulation tools in Maya? Okay, because those, uh, if I recall correctly, in Maya, fluid and smoke simulation is integrated into one tool, right? Okay, so, good. Let me first uh, tell you a little bit about the history of this project. Um, this Manta flow was developed by some person named Niels, and he's the developer who developed both the fluid simulation in Blender and the smoke simulation. And uh, now he created a framework that uh, can be used standalone and it's mainly for research purposes, but he would really likely like to see it integrated into Blender. Unfortunately, Niels cannot be here today and that's why I'm here to fill his position. And um, uh, me, myself, I also want this to be integrated into Blender and there are a few reasons for this and I will show you the first reason now. And that is, take a look at the current smoke simulation in Blender and we might encounter some issues with it. So these are uh, demos I created of the current smoke simulation and stop. Okay, um, let me see whether you can see it. Oh, you can hardly see anything. Um, can somebody turn down the light please? Turn down the light because uh, I actually wanted to tell, show a little bit about the small details in here. And uh, it seems like. Uh, can somebody please turn down the light? Or um, maybe let me just uh, tell you what you should be, see here. And that is the, on, especially on the part on the top left corner, there are hardly any details in the smoke. And um, so. There was a thread on Blender Artists about this, and it was by somebody who wanted uh, to, people to rate the simulation on a scale from one to 10. And um, if you look at this, uh, how much points would you give it? Just show me with your hand, like a uh, five or seven. So, unfortunately, I know you cannot see a lot, but uh, I see most people give it uh, at least a five, between five and eight, some people even nine. That's nice, because um, on Blender Artist, The person gave it, oh, great, <laughs> he gave it five points because of uh, the lack of details in the simulation. And I see you cannot see anything. <laughs> okay, then let me just uh, switch over to the next slide because here, um, this was also in the demo, here we get a lot of details on the surface. And um, the question is why do we have details here but not in this shot? And let me tell you what the reason is. Uh, the reason for this was, in this shot, I had to use a very high resolution for the base simulation because down here, where the glass is, the interaction only with obstacles only works right when you have a uh, very high base resolution. And uh, the, Blender's, the Blender's MOOC simulation also has a tool to crank up the resolution by adding artificial detail. That is what I used here but it comes with a penalty on the usage of RAM. So for both simulations, I maxed out the RAM on my workstation, but because I couldn't use as much high resolution here, the smoke looks like kind of dull, but uh, I get the interaction with the glass. So um, this is actually a very common problem in smoke simulation and um, a very common problem if you use it because it only can have a low base resolution and you have to add details somehow. Um, this is, for example, how other companies are adding detail to their simulations. Um, they are basically mapping textures on top of the simulation and the texture is mapped to the flow. Like uh, you can see it here in the middle, all the small details in here, they are not in the actual simulation. They are added as a, three, as a texture that is mapped to the flow coordinates of the smoke. This is pretty cool. You get it in Fumifix, for example, but this is actually not what I'm talking about here. It's just to tell you that um, this problem is persistent and many people have tried to find different solutions. 
And uh, the solution by Niels is actually the following. And his idea that is in Manta Flow is to add detail only to the surface of the smoke and thus save computation time and uh, save on RAM. And if you don't really get any idea about this by just looking at these four images, don't worry. I also have the entire um, video demonstration he used for SIGGRAPH. So. So um, this is a demonstration about these techniques about the so-called vortex sheet. Um, what you see here is basically uh, it's like the smoke simulation, but it has a mesh integrated Manta flow. So this is a demo right in Manta flow, and it has a mesh, so you only see the surface. Uh, they did it because it, uh, you can see the details they will add later on better. And um, personally, I already think that this would be pretty cool to have a possibility to mesh the surface of a smoke simulation like you do it with a fluid one. And um, just imagine the, uh, like for example, in the tornado they want to create for um, Gooseberry. I guess this would look pretty cool to just use the surface of a simulation and not the volume rendering because they have this uh, very water-like tornado they want to create. Um, and the idea is also, you hopefully, hopefully get the idea that they are adding details just on the surface. This is now um, a version where details are added everywhere and on the right where the details are only added at, at, added at the surface where they are meaningful. And uh, so uh, it gets a little better, the quality gets higher, and um, also the, um, you use less RAM, higher quality, and it just looks better, and uh, Manta has a few other cool things that um, are really nice. Okay, let's just watch this demo again, and then let's move on. This is a, actually a standard scene that's used quite often for uh, papers when papers want to present something like uh, fluid or smoke simulations. They usually use this scene. And um, you, see, you might have noticed at the beginning where the smoke comes out of the ale that there is um, like a boundary. And that was because the resolution was so low. It was a really low resolution simulation and all the fine details were added by the vortex sheet method. And um, yeah, I guess we've seen enough. Okay, so um, this is one thing, and um, there are a few other things I'd really like to see in Blender for the smoke simulation, which we have, unfortunately, not yet here, because, yeah, Manta isn't integrated yet, totally. And that is uh, so-called vortex particles. You see it on the left. Um, this, is anyone familiar with the concept of these vortex particles? Um, basically, it's the idea that you have a particle, and it will induce this um, curled motion into the smoke at the, uh, at the place where the particle is. And this is actually a very nice feature because usually the smoke simulation is just uh, not high resolution enough to capture things like um, f flow over the surface and when the smoke reaches the edge, for example, there should be vorticity, but uh, due to our low resolution, it usually isn't. And with these vortex particles, you could just, at the edge, create an emitter for particles and it will create the vortex particles and you will have a curly motion of the smoke after it has reached the edge, for example. And um, that's something I really need because uh, once I had to uh, cancel a job and tell them Blender can do this, I would need uh, vortex particles for it and uh, I also told them that they should look for a Houdini guy because Houdini has this and then the Houdini guy got the job, did it well and um, yeah, <laughs> that's one of the reasons I would really like to see this in Blender. And, um, it's all, these wartons are actually pretty common and they are already in Manta. In the middle you see vortex filaments and they are used to create things like smoke rings. Um, they are not in there yet, they are in, still in development. But um, I talked with the developers and they are actually trying to add those. So, there's more in store. Um, I guess most of you would love to see the last part, the last bullet points because uh, like uh, doing things on a graphics card really fast and everything. 
And, uh, yeah, I know there is at least one person here who would love to do two-dimensional simulations. Is it right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Manta can do simulations in 2D and in 3D. Pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I cannot say much about the well, about the fluid simulation part because uh, the integration work started with the smoke part. The only thing I can say for sure at the moment for fluid simulations is that we can have multiple domains if it's integrated, like we have for smoke now. And now let's let me just do a small live demonstration because uh, Manta is actually a framework that is. Um, yeah, it's standalone usually. And, um, let me try to actually do this on the big screen. Simple to do. Uh, basically, for Manta, you have uh, Python files that define your scene, and uh, then you can see the simulation in a very special kind of view. So. If you take a look at this, um, let me make it bigger, and once again, you hardly see anything. Because um, you have all those small, um, it looks like dots here, and those are actually small uh, vectors. So you, uh, so you see the vectors. Pause it. Yeah. So you can see the vectors, and you can skip through it, because this is just a, um, it's just a plane that's cutting through the simulation, and this way you can actually take a look and analyze. For example, if there's something wrong with your simulation, you can look at the vectors and see whether there are any problems in it. And this is actually the very same way that uh, Houdini is working in this case. So if you're working with Houdini, you could also have the option to take a look at your smoke simulation and uh, we'll use a, like a plane, cut through it, take a look at all the motion vectors and all the vectors that are defining the um, curl and everything. Uh, so this is actually pretty cool and I, the developer told me that when Manta is getting integrated into Blender, you, we might also get this kind of analyzation tools directly in the viewport for our simulations, which I would really love to see. And um, now let me demonstrate the integration of Manta into Blender. Because uh, this is something actually that it works since yesterday evening. <laughs> That's why I cannot, unfortunately, I cannot uh, show you much. But um, it's really actually working without uh, too many big problems. You know, on Linux, is since yesterday evening. So the developer worked hard, and he worked hard up until the last minute. This was totally cool. And um, so basically, um, I got a simulation saved here. It supports, at the moment, the idea is to create um, a, an integration that is like working exactly like the smoke simulation in Blender is doing now. So what has been integrated is uh, Manta, and you see down below, after you've selected domain, just Manta flow settings. If you uh, turn on this, then you will be using Manta. And uh, the, the, the idea is to get a normal integration first, so that it's integrated like the normal smoke simulation, and then add the additional features. That means at the moment we don't really have uh, any additional features except for the noise settings down here, which will just induce noise into your simulation. And um, I'm not sure whether solar resolution is working actually, so I'm not going to demo this. And um, in the end, you have just uh, you have some smoke. So this is the current state of the uh, integration. You, uh, it supports collision objects and it supports force fields. And um, yeah. I will start to do some test renderings and some benchmarks because this is what I wanted to present here and um, it wouldn't work out. But uh, yesterday evening I did a few benchmarks and it's still a little slower than the current in implementation in Blender, but the idea is to get it at least as the same speed, up to the same speed, and then start to add additional features we got from Manta and then let's see where this is going because um, the developers of the original Manta want this as well. And I want this, and there are probably a few other users of uh, the simulation tools in Blender who also want Manta. And um, why would this be good both for the developers of Manta and for us? Well, 
the developer there from academia. So Niels is now working in academia. He had been working uh, for Scanda initial effects first, but he is now in Switzerland, ETH Zurich, as a professor. And he is using the framework for research, like I mean, a lot of other people are doing this for research. And of course, they would like to get a nice um, possibility to um, do visualizations with it, to visualize the research so, uh, with easy adding objects and a nice render in the back end. So they are, would be very happy if, he had, if this was be, would be integrated into Blender. And we as users could be happy as well because, yeah, there is a lot of cool features in there and this is something that's really used in academia. So um, if they're adding new features like um, it will be always be on bleeding edge, cutting edge research. So this way, Blender would be probably the first package to get all the new crazy new features. So we would be at the forefront and not lagging behind. Okay, so um, this is all I have to show you and I wanted to show you. Are there any questions? You say this is being developed in a university. Um, I work in a university. Academic software is notoriously unreliable and shoddy and is designed just to get the next academic paper out. How confident are you in the quality of the code that's being produced? Um, basically, the, uh, the fluid simulation we have in Blender right now by Niels is also an academic code. It was developed in the university and he integrated it into Blender using a Google sum of code. So uh, the quality of the tool is the same, is at least the same quality as the current simulation we have. Also the um, smoke simulation, the base, is also, was also in a, an academic paper by Niels. And, uh, so he's actually trying to get a nice software engineering so people, it's easily extendable so people can do actual research with the framework. Yeah. Yes, what you showed in Blender was a real-time calculation of the, of, the, uh, of the smoke? Actually, so it was pre-baked, okay. but uh, it's actually pretty fast. I can create a new scene if you want to and demo the speed. It's like... Uh, no, 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 it was just a question. Okay. Yeah, Got you, uh, maybe up, up there? <laughs> There is a chance to have it really real time, uh, and also it's portable real time, uh, so that uh, it can use it, be used in simulations. Um, actually, not this kind of simulation. No, also not for uh, the big visual effects houses. It's uh, no way real time. Uh, you would, for real time things, you would need a uh, different kind of architecture, like. Um, there was a nice paper by some guy from Intel who would totally fake the uh, appearance of viscosity and uh, vorticity by using just particles and this was really high speed, speedy. But this quality and this kind of um, fluid and smoke simulation real time? No. No. <laughs> yeah. How physically correct is the simulation? Is it only pleasant or is it physically correct like in the FDS simulator for example? Um, the original Navier Stokes equations. Um, you are in the um, the base simulation is physically correct. All the other things you have seen are tricks to add detail because the problem with the physical correct part is that you would need a tremendous resolution that you cannot, couldn't ever compute. And that's why all the stuff that you see, all the eye candy, is not physically correct. It's uh, meant to be uh, like cheating to get results that are looking like they were physically correct. And this is actually where most of the research in regards to the fluid and smoke simulation is going on at the moment. Um. So uh, this is less a question and more some kind of uh, common uh, try to, to get some influence into this. I mean, I guess uh, there are lots of people doing these kinds of simulations like, I don't know, with different software like OpenFoam and I have no idea what, what, whatever exists. And it, it might be nice if we could have some common interfaces to do this kind of stuff. Uh, if we want to, if you already are developing this with a new engine so that actually you can plug in your your own pre-calculated mesh because there are standard formats for that in computational fluid dynamics to do this uh, so that one can do his own simulation with another software tool and uh, uh, can get it into Blender, yeah. Actually, I, I couldn't really hear most of it, uh, but oh. uh, yeah, I guess I'm in. So, what I really wanted to ask is, uh, 
uh, if we could have some common interfaces to do this kind of simulations because I mean I guess there are lots of people who do computational fluid dynamics and who would like to do their simulations or at least to visualize them in Blender and uh, right now well we had the Blender internal smoke and no one actually knew how to plug his own smoke engine into it and right now you're porting it to a new engine so it would be nice that we would have some kind of common interfaces uh, to do this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I think as well. Up there is the question. So, um, you know what's happening with OpenVDB and if it has anything to do if it's Mantaflow or the old simulation or it's just a container format? And, um. and also, uh, the second question is um, the mesh remeasure. Uh, that is that something we will see integrated to, or is it only the smoke algorithm? Actually, um, the the thing that it exporting the meshes is something that would be totally integrated into Blender because this is actually like the fluid simulation at the moment is working. It has a simulation under the hood and then it's doing a meshing. And if you integrate Manta, we would also get the meshing of the um, simulation, like in the video. And um, in regards to OpenVDB, OpenVDB is a general library for volumetric data. Uh, that also has a few nice features like uh, compositing with volumes and everything and um, that should also be integrated in Blender. In, in my opinion, the guys from DreamWorks who developed OpenMediaB, they, they told me that they are um, eager to help if there was a Blender developer who would integrate OpenMediaB. But uh, OpenMediaB is so big that we need, really need to get a good design on how to integrate it because I guess from the design, the the way they designed it, it's actually meant for a software that is completely node-based from the ground up, like Houdini. And um, to get it into Blender, we really need to uh, fi find a good design for the integration. And um, OpenMDB is actually just a storage format for volumetric data. And um, I guess the simulation might, if they incorporate OpenMDB, they might get a quicker simulation, for, probably because they get lookup cells faster or so, but um, I don't think there is any actual plans for them to directly um, support OpenMediaB. Yeah. I actually know the people who developed at OpenMediaB because we worked together at uh, Digital Domain and oh. then he went to DreamWorks. Uh, but one thing, uh, I think with the question before, uh, one thing Houdini is doing very well is uh, the interaction, imagine I throw a ball uh, against like a cloth and then it interacts with the cloth simulation, then it's dropping down into a piece of water, then it's uh, interacting with the fluid. I think what they did very well in Houdini is like thinking about different kinds of engines and how they can interact. And I think that's uh, if you are planning to do this uh, with uh, Blender, you should do the same thing. That you have like with Bullet, you have a collision detection system and stuff like that. All this stuff should uh, be in the framework uh, which can interact with each other without knowing, you know, the fluid guy might not know about the collision detection stuff and so on. And mm. it's a very tricky uh, business to do that right. That's actually one of the targets for Gooseberry to get uh, unified physics. Somewhat, uh, from what I've heard. <laughs> so I guess the talk is over. <laughs>